Hello everyone, welcome to another Career Talk with IT Professionals. And today I have a co-founder, CEO, and CTO, but it's only one person. But before we begin, please do hit that red subscribe button and notification bell on YouTube. So my guest today is Mr. Ragde Palsis. Hello, Ragde. Hi, guys. All right. So glad to have you here. Uh, finally, so let's uh, start off by asking or clarifying um, why you maintain or hold uh, three titles. Okay, actually, uh, it's just two titles. The co-founder is, I think, um, you know, a way uh, to say that you are the one who started the company. Right. Um, the two uh, titles that um, depicts my role. CEO and CTO, well, CEO as the one who lead the company and CTO as the one who lead the decisions, especially the technical decisions um, when it comes to our product. Right, right. No? And um, as a, I would assume that, you know, for our audience sake also that as a startup, it's important that you have this um, control of both the direction and also the technology right and basically what skill set do you need to be able to combine these two positions or hold these two positions originally i was performing as ceo you know when when we started the company in 2013 back then we are still a sole proprietor so i registered that as a sole proprietor so that we can work with partners we can be um, accredited. And then in um, 2016, we uh, converted from sole proprietor to a uh, corporation. Right. So going back, uh, there, there's basically no one to lead the company. So by default, of course, I have to, um, uh, you know, um, step up and lead the company. That's why I uh, voluntarily uh, took the, the CEO role. For the CTO, I was actually uh, recruited as C C CTO to other startups uh, like Flipchip, uh, Tripcada, mainly because uh, I used to lead um, the development of tech, tech products. Right. That's actually my my training. Uh, I was a, a BS um, CS computer science. And now that you hold uh, the CEO position and leading the company, are you still actively coding? Uh, is this still in your day-to-day -day or has this uh, shrunk or not shrunk, but uh, shifted more? Well, um, as, as you know, CEO and CTO, I have those two roles. Right. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot code anymore. Uh, my guys are a lot better than me. So I just leave the coding to them. But... Uh, I well, I can read the, their codes. For example, um, if there are some issues uh, in the production, and um, sometimes if I find it on my email because we're sending email notifications via email, I actually gave uh, opinions, feedback, uh, maybe some um, guidance to our lead developers. Oh, oh, this is something that we can optimize. Should we optimize this or keep on seeing this? Should we do this? Uh, all, all those kinds of um, initiatives when it comes to uh, our product development. Right. And presently, what is the stack or what scripting languages are you and your company using so that we just, you know, our audience are able to find out generally what's still popular um, yeah. at the moment? Currently, currently, the back end tech stack is uh, mainly Ruby on Rails. And then uh, for API, we're using GraphQL. And then for front end, um, UJS, you know, the usual HTML, CSS, uh, foundation. Uh, for native development, well, it's basically just native. Uh, Swift for uh, iOS, and then um, Java for Android. Right, right. Uh, thanks for that. No? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I've noticed, no, again, this could be my just perception on the usage but i i feel like ruby uh it it was very popular uh, ruby and rails was very popular in silicon valley 
and then became popular here. But at the moment, I don't see a lot of conversation about it. Do you also notice that, or is that maybe because I'm in a different area or segment? I think it becomes on um, what are the tech stuff that's being um, uh, being sold or being distributed in um, universities. Mm. Usually, if you are Usually, if you are doing um, programming 101, you don't use Rails. You don't use Ruby, right? If you're doing uh, programming 101, you do uh, Python, uh, C. Uh, if you're doing Web PHP, so it's not it's not usual to do programming 101 with uh, with Ruby. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe it's because uh, it was uh, popular in Japan and Japanese are not known in you know marketing versus uh, PHP, right? So I agree with your observation. Uh, it's not so popular when it comes to the number of developers that um, you, uses it. But um, I think it's not, you, you don't choose a tech stock because of the number of people that uh, uses it. No? It depends on uh, whether this uh, tech stock that you're using um, is fit to the culture that you're trying to, to build in your company. Do you want uh, some sort of maturity imbued on your culture? Then you should choose, uh, you know, a tech stack that will reinforce that. In our case, yeah, that's that's our use case. Uh, we we see that, uh, you know, the developers are more disciplined, uh, are more, you know, uh, they they take like ownership of their work. The approach is, you know, a bit different versus the ones that we interviewed that uses. PHP or any other programming language. Right, right. Um, I'm glad you touched upon the culture and you know uh, of, of hiring people and in general, as you mentioned, uh, managing people. How do you describe your management style? Are you like you know very bossy, less bossy? Um, what's your culture um, that you try to impose? Or maybe right now it's very early. Right now it's very early and. Even me, if I'm actually looking back at my management style, it actually evolves. Uh-huh. So I, I used to, I used to be like a micromanager maybe years back, and now I'm starting to realize I'm starting to see that oh I, I should change this. I should uh, automate some parts of it, um, like you know relying on the documentations. Uh, trust your team that they'll read it, that they'll deliver based on the you know deliver deliver delivery dates that um, you guys agreed when you're doing sprint meetings and so on and so forth. So right now you just you just need to trust with your tools and also with your with your team. Right, right. Then right. um do then you know micromanaging your your team members. Right, and uh, of course the challenge of building a team or you know setting a team is the hiring part as you mentioned you know looking for that culture with their language their proficiency um what do you look for in hiring do you look for certification do you look at their github um do you look at um you know what are those factors that really uh, impress you when you are hiring for for software developers, uh, I'm very particular on experience, uh-huh. and uh, it also varies. The requirements also varies depending on the position that we're hiring for. So for entry level, uh, the ones uh, that you know maybe just fresh graduate, no experience. Usually, the way how we do it is we look at whether you did you made some projects during your let's say academic as academic requirement or you did some uh, internship where in you 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 know you you do coding so that's actually a plus for entry level developers right if you don't have that but we we saw on your pre interview questions usually we send pre interview questions prior to interviewing them no so when we see on your pre interview questions that you're really keen on learning how to code but the thing is, ang prob- the problem is it's hard to penetrate our industry, right? If you don't have any experience, right? Right. So the way how we do it is we offer them uh, eight-week internship. 
So mm-hmm. on the AP internship, we uh, provide them uh, the course outline wherein you, they learn um, our tech stack. So two weeks learning Ruby on Rails, and then another week GraphQL, and then uh, another week uh, Vue.js, and then from there we, we reinforce it. So, and then uh, towards eight, uh, the eighth week, we um, share them, um, to be specific for Chat Genie, we um, ask them to also learn how to work with the Messenger SDKs, Viber, uh, the payment uh, methods that we are integrating with our solution, so on and so forth. And then from there, more reinforcement by doing more exercises. For more senior position, uh, well, the best way to do it is, you know, job post and then or uh add add the people that you want to hire on linkedin mm. send them a message if you see that their experience is aligned with what you're looking for then you send them an offer right, no. right. uh you ask about do i look for certifications actually that's something that's irrelevant for me maybe it's just me but um for me if you if you um Work on um, getting certificates than contributing on open source projects. For me, that's a red flag. So for me, uh, I rather look for someone that's really good at what they do mm-hmm. than um, an applicant that collects a lot of certifications. Right, right. You touched about um, internship boot camps no and actually this is uh, maybe for my own personal learnings as well i find it quite hard to do internships at the moment because of the remote working where unlike previously i i would really love to have interns now because you can do pair programming you can you know teach them really well but because of remote working i find it quite hard um internship for developers or internship for you know fresh grads um how, how do you feel about remote working how, how do you, uh, you know, solve that uh, dilemma uh for your fresh grads is it is it like more like hey this is your curriculum please study it and then i'll see you after eight weeks no uh, because it also yeah. takes time right uh to a company we have we have to invest also in teaching right and now teaching remotely is even harder so, um, w- what are your thoughts on, on this? Uh, what worked with us is we require them weekly journals. Mm-hmm. So, we, of course, our first day is you do it orientation. Um, what, what, uh, what are the things that you do on your company? How do you uh, onboard the uh, new um, people in your company? Like, uh, in their case, as interns, they'll be onboarded as entry-level developers once they pass the, the assessment so you give them um, basically a step-by-step process on how they can step up on the ranks like if they start with entry-level and then once they uh, let's say pass from the, the peer review of their colleagues they'll be upgraded as um, junior developers and so on and so forth so for us uh, the weekly journals work mm-hmm. and uh, when it comes to teaching we're very low touch so it's not spoon feeding we're in oh uh oh today we'll teach you how to do for loop uh this week we'll teach you how to uh connect your api to your front end so we don't do that so we that's why we um give them a course outline and then uh we look at their just actually just earlier i'm looking at uh, the journal of one of our interns so you look at whether they actually getting it mm. and then uh, looking at their journal um they, it's actually break it, break it down uh, broken down day by day so you'll see their progression so you see oh this is a good candidate oh this is a, a fast learner which is in our field you know it's important right it's one of the uh important um characteristics of a good applicant if they're fast learner meaning they can survive in this um industry so for us yeah course outline low touch um teaching expectation and then uh, from there you also ask your uh current developers to mentor them so that's important so the mentorship so if they have any issues like 
they have um, questions on how to install this because it doesn't work on their Windows machine. Of course, uh, the solution there is to convert to Linux, right? So from there, uh, they give them like more tips and tricks. And then um, if the mentor sees potential, they give more exercises. So it works hand in hand. No. I thought you would say the solution there is to containerize, no? to make sure that uh, everything is, uh, the dependency is part of it as well. No? But uh, kidding aside, um, with remote working, uh, I believe a lot of uh, users are now more inclined to do self-service, right? And it really is timely, I would say, for some something like Chat Genie, no? Um, how has remote working, is, is my assumption correct that remote working and, uh, sorry, not remote working, just being remote in general uh, accelerated uh, your industry or at least your field? In general, actually, I, I know you belong to this uh, for the tech startup. Yes. Uh, well, on our experience, um, the remote uh, work works. No, so... I'm looking at continuing this remote work setup because I, I truly believe that you know there are like uh, developers you know, in Parplang provinces, maybe in Pangasinan, Pampanga, or Iloilo, that the you know you don't require them to relocate, but you can hire them as remote um, employee. You know? So for me, we'll continue it at least for the development team. Uh, for the business development or the non-development, uh, maybe that will require some in-person like meeting, discussion about strategy. Maybe three, three days in-person, um, you know, office setup, and then the rest of the week will be remote. Um, that kind of setup. Right, right, right. Huh? Um. Earlier, you mentioned how you take care of your interns, um, and you also mentioned uh, that you were a graduate of uh, com computer science, right? Um, yeah, computer science. Computer yeah. science, no? Did you always want said to be a, in the IT field? Um, for our audience who are curious, you know, was this a field that you really uh, was immediately close to your heart, or did you stumble upon it, or eventually, to some of our guests, actually, they, they somehow actually enjoyed IT when they're already in working, not even before uh, their college course was totally different. Uh, what's your story like? I remember uh, the interview question no, when I was actually um, applying for a spot no, in our university. So the question is, why do you want to take this course? Okay. And my answer was, uh, I want to develop computer games. Yeah. You're because uh, mm. back in the day, you know, I remember my brothers playing, uh, you know, family computer, Rockman, and then uh, back then, I just want to create something like that. Right, right. And then, uh, true enough, our thesis is a 3D game. Mm. You know? So, this is really uh, my chosen field. When I started in college, ito, ito na talaga. Right, like, right. Month. Yeah, and uh, another jump start or another major point is picking your first job. No? So, for example, uh, your thesis was a uh, computer game. When you were looking out for your first job, uh, what were the factors that you looked at? Were you looking at, hey, I want to go into the game industry? Or, um, you know, what, what, what happened there in your first job? Job. Yes, of course, dream job. Dream. My dream job back then, when we we're doing our thesis, is we always watch the mga Blizzard, mm. um, you know, games, how they do it. Of course, th those are my um, mga line of work that I want to be in. Mm. But uh, unfortunately, um, those kind of opportunities are not so much available at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, there's this opportunity that came up. Um, one one of my college professors uh, asked me what I'm doing. Oh, I'm, sir, I'm I'm looking for work. Uh, also, oh, you're looking for work. Uh, can you go here? They're looking for a uh, college instructor to teach in their computer science department, and then that's my first job. Right, right. Now, um, some 
how did you shift from academe into the industry this is also a good question i myself was well, reverse long, reverse for me i actually uh, started uh, at, in the professional three years and then went into a academe for one whole year and then went to professional and then had part-time teaching no um so I, i've been always been part of weirdly part of the academe for, for you how did you transition from academe into the main industry or at least the it industry the transition is very smooth because after a year of teaching i was already doing uh, side hustle where in we're selling softwares part-time so back in 2008 we are already doing like this tech startup where in we're selling we're selling um we're selling software that automates the um paid exhibition directory so when you go to exhibits right um, you have to wait to buy uh, a directory so that you'll get the list of ex- exhibitors. So we converted that into a, a web app that you can install in a CD. So back then, CD, pa, right? Yes, yes, yes. Uh-huh. So we tried selling that, but unfortunately, um, you know, they're not really that they're not really fast on adopting um, digital technologies. And um, in 2012, I think 2011. They announced the very first start of Weekend Manila, and then uh, we joined. And then uh, after that, I learned that oh, so you can start your company and ask investors to fund it. Right. right. So back then, I, I ex- explored it actively. Uh, after a year, I sent my resignation. I told the uh, Ardina, Dean, um, I won't continue working. Uh, I, I won't continue teaching anymore. I want to pursue this, and yeah, that's it. That's it. Now, and uh, at at this point, you are now the a co-founder, CEO, and CTO. No, so to our audience, um, people will find your journey quite successful. Now, uh, from student life to academe to joining a startup and then founding a startup yourself. No, so how do you personally define a uh, success? Is it being able to make your own uh, company or what is um, basically what's your end goal uh, what makes you successful baga yeah well as with any other startup the measure of success is you you go ipo you got bought right <laughs> yun yun eh yun definition of success sa atin eh. uh and we're not yet there we're very far so but um i think uh the things that you need to learn and acquire in able to go there is to just um, be passionate what you do. Uh, always be hungry at you know uh, things that you need to learn. Like me, I, I still need to learn a lot. You know, like right now, we're, we're in the middle of our fundraising and um, you know, being a computer science graduate, you, you don't get that as part of your subjects, right? So. Right. Of course, you have to learn it on your own. Watch a lot of videos, find mentors, find sort of friends that uh, already did it. So things like that. You need to um, seek um, proper network of people um, so that you can acquire uh, new skills and um, hopefully, you know, you'll, you'll get you'll get the average of all of those network that you acquired. Right. Right. No. So, um, approaching my last question, as you mentioned, uh, that's what you, what makes you you. So, if to uh, summarize or basically to uh, answer the question on your advice to our audience no, on on how to be you, po, no, could you just uh, summarize and you know to especially to, to the young ones who are quite early in their career, what they should do. So if you're still studying uh, and then you haven't uh, taken up your internship, make sure that you'll find uh, an internship that will allow you to develop softwares. So it's it's not remember your internship is something that you you'll use to acquire uh, knowledge and experience in the industry. It's not not just there to when there you know, 300 hours so that you'll pass the subject. 
Um, this is the reason why uh, if you see an entry level job ad and then um, they mentioned that they, you should have at least six months experience, it's because your internship should um, like provide you those kind of experience already. Right. So find an internship that will allow you to, you know, do software development, find a mentor. Uh, usually the mentor selects the mentee. No, it's not the other way around. Interesting. Uh, so the way how you do it is, you know, get yourself exposed to these mentors. No? Uh, show to them that you're really eager to learn. And then if they see that, oh, you're, this one is eager to learn, I'll make time to mentor this um, mentee. So you know, do, do those kind of things. Be able to um, to land in this uh, to penetrate in this industry. So, audience, I hope you've learned a couple of things from our guest Ragden. No? Uh, I myself have learned uh, quite a few things also, uh, especially towards the uh, internship program or how to make a in- successful remote internship program. And so, as you are, if you're still looking for an internship, you're not yet graduate, or even let's say you're a career shifter. Maybe you can have like an exposure via a internship like into the industry that you'd want to follow. No? And again, if you maybe don't have enough time, please do, you know, for example, comment here. Try to um, see what you're looking for. Watch our videos so that you can have some glimpse of an idea of what industry or what positions that you might be uh, aiming for. So before I... Um, you know, before we close, Mr. Ragde, do you have any uh, last shout outs or invites um, for our audience? So I'll, I'm going to plug our product. So as, a, as a Rob mentioned, uh, I am the co-founder, CEO, and CTO of Chajini. We're providing online store to businesses within Facebook Messenger, uh, Instagram, Viber, Gcash, PayMy, and other super apps. So if you're a business that are looking to sell online on the channels that I mentioned, go to chatgenie.ph. And if you are looking for, let's say, opportunity to get in in the industry, uh, we're looking for a uh, copy editor, associate uh, project manager, and uh, a lot of software development interns. So if you happen to be interested, make sure to attach your uh, updated resume and send it to ragde at chatgenie.ph ragde that's r-a-g-d-e at chatgenie.ph right so thank you very much audience and thank you again also uh, ragde for sharing your insight and that wraps up our episode today thank you everyone and goodbye bye And of course, if you like our content, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe button, and notification bell. Okay, nice, nice. All right.